How's it going, everyone? And welcome to the first episode in the Ultimate Game Realm side series, The Unlicensed Game Era. And this is your creator, Dixon, logging on. Now, what the hell is this all about? And what are unlicensed games? Well, they're mainly type of video games that have never gotten the seal of approval to run legally on a specific piece of video game hardware. I mean, these days there's a lot of modding and hacks for retro gaming that's been released on bootlegs, homebrews, or reproduction cartridges. And of course, the modding community for PC gaming is quite popular from retro PC gaming to modern PC gaming. But we're not talking about PC gaming or modding. We're talking about unauthorized game cartridges that run on retro gaming hardware. And the majority of these unlicensed games run on the 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System. Nowadays, Nintendo or Sega or Atari are no longer making any profit from their old hardware. And they don't seem to have control for the cartridge manufacturing these days either. Except for, like, Nintendo's first party brand like Mario, Donkey Kong, and Zelda, and etc. But back in the day, when Nintendo was in the market of slapping on the seal of approval on their cartridges, making the games licensed to run legally on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, everyone who knew their Nintendo history, that since 1985, that Nintendo dominated the world. It's still kicking ass to this day. But there were other video game developers and publishers that were trying to get their games to run on the NES, but Nintendo wouldn't give every one of these developers or publishers their approval. Well, if you're a fan of the Angry Video Game Nerd or Pat the NES Punk like me, that's how I got my information from to begin with. But in my series of unlicensed games, I will do alternative takes on these games. Now the majority of these unlicensed games are craptastic to oblivion. But there might be some gems in that category though. But in the first few episodes, we're gonna take care of the history first. The main purpose of the UGR unlicensed game series is to dig up the turds to at least find some hidden gems in those turds and flush the remaining turds I just digged up down the toilet. But episode one is volume one of the history of the unlicensed games. Just for opening, and the next few episodes will be other volumes of unlicensed gaming. Fortunately, it would take too long to do it all in one project, so I had to do it in a couple volumes. It's just that I want to get the history out of the way first before I dig any deeper into these games. Alright, let's get started. Let's start out with a game maker that's arguably more legit than any other unauthorized ones, and the first company to bypass the NES lockout ship. Tengen. Tengen, or Tengen, however you pronounce it, was a subsidiary for Atari, but he still put it unlicensed NES games and black cartridges. Some of these games from Tengen were arcade ports like Rolling Thunder, Roll Blaster, Super Sprint, Gauntlet, Tubin, 720 Degrees, Paperboy, Vindicators, Clax, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, and Pac-Mania. And somehow, Tengen managed to get away with releasing Sega arcade ports on the NES, like Afterburner, Shinobi, Fantasy Zone, and Alien Syndrome. Tengen also did some movie license games like Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, and cartoon license game, Roadrunner. Plus, Tengen did one sports series that spawned two sequels, RBI Baseball and one of the most popular puzzle games of all time, Tetris. But when Nintendo bought the exclusive rights for Tetris at that time, Nintendo forced Tengen to pull their copies from the shelf, so only Nintendo can sell their copies. But I would definitely have to admit between the two versions, the unlicensed version from Tengen is superior than the seal approval version from Nintendo. 
but Tetris will be a story for another day. Eventually, Tension actually did get around to getting seal approval updates on some of their games, or ports of their games, like Pac-Man, and that port was pretty good. So good that they added it on the NES Classic Mini. And Tension games on other consoles or portables were at least licensed. But regardless, games from Tension, licensed or unlicensed, practically does get the same treatment when it comes to the quality and gameplay when comparing to the Nintendo games with the official seal of approval. Tension and licensed games and Nintendo games with seal of approval both have high quality gems and low quality of bad apples. Tension was originally founded by Atari Games in 1987, then bought out by Time Warner Interactive in 1994. Now there was a legal history battle between Nintendo and Atari Games, which was settled in 1994, and Nintendo being victorious. Now I believe that Tension was the first company to bypass the NES lockout chip, but Atari Games, who owned Tension, had a pretty damn good reason for doing so. But that would take me forever to explain everything. So for more information on that story, I highly recommend that you check out the Game and Historians channel on his episode on Tengen, Atari Games vs. Nintendo. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the Game and Historians channel. Because if you want to know good history on retro gaming, Norman Caruso is the man who has it. So that wraps up the beginning on how unlicensed NES games started. So from here on, with these unlicensed games, I'll probably only be talking about Tension games as well as official NES games as references. But like official NES games, Tension will be the only unlicensed games that will be left out of the series. Because Tension did have a valid excuse for making unlicensed game cartridges for the Nintendo Entertainment System. But the other unlicensed games I'm going to be talking about from this point on doesn't have any excuse to exist on this planet to begin with. Except to make a quick buck for the shitload of fuck. Which is another way of saying it's now time to get down to some serious business. These unlicensed game creators that brought an amount of embarrassment to the world of gaming. And now it's time to get my protection mask ready and have it ready to put on in order to prevent the smelly odor of what comes out of these awful games plugging up my senses. Starting out with these ugly cartridges from Color Dreams. Until then, this is Dixon of the Ultimate Gamer Realm, logging off.